Now is the time to trade for Jaden Daniels before he is a top five dynasty quarterback next year. We'll explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting the way we'd like them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Yahoo Fantasy. On today's show, we're taking a look at three players that you need to trade for before the 2024 season begins. Um, we're going to be looking at a certain Chiefs wide receiver, a second-year receiver out in Seattle. But, Kate, I want to tell you a little story before we get to the number one. Um, I was getting around this morning thinking of our podcast, what we're going to talk about, and we knew we were going to do some trade target stuff. And you told me that you are trading for Jaden Daniels before he becomes a top five or top six dynasty quarterback mm -hmm. next year. And I was making my coffee, and I said, oh. Oh, I don't need this today. That's a that is a take that'll get you <laughs> ready to go in the morning. So, Kate, explain this one to me. Why are you going out and getting Jaden Daniels right now? Jaden Daniels spicy takes are like Folgers in your cup. You're absolutely correct. And I started my day off with a zinger on that one. But the best part is, I totally believe it. It's not even. I'm not even being disingenuous. I'm not being uh, hyperbolic. I am truly all in on Jaden Daniels. And what, what leads me to that conclusion? It's not just what we saw in the preseason. Obviously he came out and had a fantastic preseason debut as did most of the rookie quarterbacks, which we've praised, but like I keep going back and looking at the archetype uh, of Anthony Richardson and his ascension to top six dynasty quarterback realm. And We've seen the man play, what, 10 quarters of NFL football? Like, we haven't seen that much more of a sample size for Anthony Richardson. And what I'm going back to is the fact that Jaden Daniels, one of the most dynamic runners in this game, day one, I had some concerns about his running style because it can be pretty reckless and a little, a little dangerous, if you're asking me. Um, but, like, how is that really any different from Anthony Richardson? You know, like... Yes, Anthony Richardson's got a bulkier frame. Uh, both of them are 6'4", but Jane Daniels looks like a string bean compared to Anthony Richardson. Uh, but, like, that hasn't matter. Like, Anthony Richardson had a season-ending shoulder injury. He's, uh, what, in college, I think, it was, or uh, maybe early or late high school, he tore his, or his like, hamstring off the bone yep. or something. Yep. Like, has multiple concussions. Like, Anthony Richardson's availability is not a guarantee. So like I, I put that pretty even, but for all the mobility that Jaden Daniels has, he's also a much better passer, I think, than Anthony Richardson day one. Let's go back to college, his final season at LSU, the Heisman winner, 90th percentile or higher, 92nd percentile or higher in clean pocket grade per PFF throws or at or beyond the sticks. No play action, which I think is pretty incredible because, like, you know that play action can kind of mask a lot of inadequacies for a it's quarterback. It's a cheat code. But because yeah. he's already so mobile and the threat is always there uh, that that he might be running and, it, like, you already don't know what the play is. Like, he already – the cheat code is built in, right? So he doesn't even play action. Uh, throws on first and second down 92nd percentile. Like everything Jaden Daniels does is pretty darn good, including the rushing. So like, I think day one, you have a ceiling uh, in terms of his rushing upside 
that is at or at least matching that of Anthony Richardson's. But I think Jaden Daniels has a safer floor as a passer. I don't disagree with anything you said. I want to add some other things here that's actually, that will actually help your case. I think this Washington defense is going to be good in time with Dan Quinn. But right now they stink. Like you look at their secondary, it's the worst secondary in the NFL. Like it's just not very good. The linebackers are okay. That's probably the best spot. They that they just don't have edge rushers either. Like I think this their defense is going to stink, and that's going to force Jaden Daniels to have to score points. And I think he's going to be in a lot of situations where he's dropping back to pass or he's going to be running with the football, right? And I just think you're going to see a ton of volume this year. The only issue that I have with this game, it's not talent, it's not situation, it's not coaching, is the quarterbacks that are currently ahead of him are pretty good. Now, let's go through some of the, the players. And if we believe that, let's let's go bold. If Jane Daniels is going to be a top five dynasty quarterback next year, here are some of the names that he's going to have to pass. C.J. Stroud. That one I could see happening because he's just going to have the rushing upside, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think you agree. Like there is a scenario where he's just ahead of C.J. Stroud because of the rushing. Anthony Richardson, who you mentioned, Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, Caleb Williams, Jordan Love. Those are all the quarterbacks that Daniels is going to have to pass in order to get up to be top five, top six range. And I think every single one of them is in the realm of possibility because, you know, again, we know that rushing upside is absolutely king. I think that's why he can easily displace CJ Stroud. I'm putting out an article this week over on Yahoo for my all fade team in 2024. And CJ Stroud is going to be on that list. He might be a perennial, you know, top eight quarterback based on his passing floor, but He has never had 200 or more rushing yards dating back to even his high school days ever in a single season. And I agree with you. Uh, You look at like last year, I I actually wrote an article a couple of weeks ago for the 33rd team about my fades and CJ Stroud was on the list. I think he had two games last year with 22 or more fantasy points. And you can get guys like Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy who had like eight or nine of those such games. Now, maybe with the the added addition of Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell coming back. But he's on a one-year deal. So like... That's right. not a long term. Probably not old. Like it's that's just a long term the, deal. The lack of rushing is going to be what holds Stroud back from being that top four or five option, in my opinion, at least. I look at Jaden Daniels like this. You know how much I love Kyler Murray, right? Like I'm a, I'm a massive Kyler Murray fan. He's just a taller version of Kyler Murray in, in an offense that I think has more talent than what Kyler's had the last couple of years. And basically, whenever Kyler's played, he's been a top five or six quarterback in fantasy leagues. So it's not hard for me to see the vision at all. Yeah, Joe Burrow, I mean, you love him as a passer. Has, a, a, I think, a little bit of a higher you know, floor in terms of rushing than C.J. Stroud. But, like, Joe Burrow has questions, too. Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, that, that pairing is not a done deal. Like we're all projecting T Higgins to go elsewhere. What does this offense look like with Joe Burrow when he doesn't have both of these assets in the mix? Does that rate or lower the floor a little bit for Joe Burrow as a passer? And again, he doesn't have that like rushing ceiling to kind of counteract that. No, I look at Jaden Daniels QB 11. And I just think to myself, like there is no way that if this dude plays even close to a full slate of games this year or even he could play half a season and I think that just knowing how we get enamored uh with players and like for instance I'm gonna go back to Justin Fields my Pittsburgh Steelers uh QB2 I'm gonna say QB2 Uh, (laughs) just the writing was on the wall for Justin Fields like we had a I think a pretty good idea that like things weren't working out for Justin Fields with the Chicago bears, right? Like things looked a little bit better last year, but you still knew there was a lack of, of long-term commitment and that this organization had big time questions, which, you know, could put his career and, and long-term viability and dynasty, you know, just totally on the map. But like, you know, last year, the year before Justin Fields was a top seven dynasty quarterback, despite us having those questions, like, Go by Jaden Daniels now, and you're not going to, no, like you're not going to regret it. 
no, you're not going to regret it because even if he has a somewhat down season, Washington's not giving up on him. And the rushing upside and the rushing floor actually is going to what's going to help you have a solid week to week floor of fantasy points. Go get Jaden Daniels now. All right, okay, let's talk about a receiver that I've been high on for the last two years, but I'm still buying here in August. Let's talk about Rashi Rice next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you never skip leg day. Maybe you never skip the gym. Maybe you never skip your morning walk. Or maybe you never skip therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever before. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That, that is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go enjoy the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kate, let's talk about a wide receiver who, I mean, you know I love, Rashi Rice. Uh, I, I'm back to buying again. I, I can't stop. No, I think this probably deserves some context, right? So let's talk about where things stand with Rashi Rice from a legal perspective, because obviously there have been some troubling incidents with Rossi, Rashi Rice to this point in his NFL career, kind of culminating in this uh, accident that took place in Dallas. And there's still kind of these looming question marks. What's the latest update in terms of where that stands for 2024? So I believe he has a court date scheduled for late December, right? So, I mean, you're talking about basically the, the end of the fantasy football season. I don't, we're not going to get a resolution in December. I don't think this is, nothing is going to get solved and probably until early 2025 at the soonest, which means nothing's going to happen in terms of a suspension this year for Rashi Rice, right? I think the NFL wants the legal process to play out. And then we're looking at potentially a suspension in 2025. I, I, I obviously I care about the suspension. I he is somebody that I've worried about because he's had a couple of incidents now, uh, a couple of incidents in the NFL, a couple of incidents back at SMU. You're worried about him staying on the field. However, as of right now, he is expected to be eligible for all 17 games. And now with Hollywood Brown likely to miss the first few weeks of the season with Xavier Worthy uh, being a rookie who has also dealt with some hamstring tightness over the last couple of days. I don't see any reason why Rashi Rice wouldn't be right back into the role that he had last year, which was essentially a thousand yard receiver with eight touchdowns uh, as a rookie. I I'm, I'm all in. And even considering the suspension. So like I've kind of, you know, I, I'm not going to compare the two situations, but I think probably the closest comparison we, we have in terms of like what to expect with Rashi Rice is probably the Alvin Kamara suspension, which was a three game yeah. suspension for an assault charge. And I, that's kind of like what I'm expecting. But here's the thing, you know, he's not going to be available for three weeks. Um I almost find it as a fantasy manager, I'm not talking like in regards to what, what got you the suspension, et cetera. But like as a fantasy manager, dealing with a suspension is a lot easier than dealing with an injury. You know, when Absolutely. it starts, you know, when it stops uh, and they're at full health when they come back, you don't have to worry about that. So like, I actually think a, a suspension, you know, there are, there are worse things that you can be dealing with in your fantasy teams and especially for dynasty. Yeah. You know, I, you can't make roster decisions based on a, a suspension here, even if it were this year. Like, I, I, 
I, I'm just I not going to worry about a suspension that's going to happen 14 months from now, right? Or something like that, right? Uh, the other thing, Kate, is I, I just want to talk about his ADP really quickly. So we did an episode back in March, like a couple days before the accident happened. And his overall ADP at the time was 31. And the, the title of that episode is, Could Rashi Rice Be a Top 10 Dynasty Receiver? Right? Like, and I, I truly think talent and situation – led me to, be, uh, to believe that that could happen, right? Since that incident, he's down to 66 overall, all the way down to wide receiver 38, wide receiver 39. And I think that's bonkers, Kate, because I think, let me ask you this. When they have all the receivers healthy, Rashi Rice, Hollywood Brown, Xavier Worthy, of those three, who do you think is going to earn the most targets week in and week out? Absolutely, Rashi Rice. And that comes down to kind of the role he plays within yes. the offense. He plays the closest. I'm not going to say he he's Travis Kelsey. Obviously, he's not a tight end. But, like, he it's works the closest to that the role. Field. He's successful against zone coverage, which, like, that is the way that Patrick Mahomes loves yes. to play football. Like, that, that's going to be the element of the, the field that is going to be the most conducive to volume. Absolutely. And of those three receivers, which one is likely to earn the most end zone and red zone targets? If we, if it's anything that we've seen, it's Rashi Rice. And because he's I mean, just the biggest. Xavier Worthy, he's a small wide receiver. Like, like and, not and Hollywood exactly. Brown's and Hollywood Brown's small too. I think Hollywood Brown came into the NFL at like 170 pounds, right? Like those are just two small receivers. Where we saw last year, even as a rookie. Rashi Rice was number one in red zone targets for this team outside of Travis Kelsey, number one among the receivers. I just don't see how anyway in year two, Rashi Rice's role doesn't get bigger. And every time I, I look at some tweets from, you know, Chiefs training camp, it's, oh, Rashi Rice had another big day. Rashi Rice caught four passes in the one-on-one -on -one period or the, uh, the team period with Patrick Mahomes. I just think he's going to be the receiver outside of Travis Kelsey that Mahomes trusts the most. And as we saw in the second half of last year, that's very, very valuable. Yeah, I've said this literally since Rashi Rice was drafted. One of my favorite qualities of him coming out of SMU was his ability to connect with his quarterback, like on scramble drills. When the play breaks down, he just always kind of seemed to be available and figured out how to connect with his quarterback in a way that like, he was a very QB friendly wide receiver in those situations, which once he was paired with Patrick Mahomes, I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. Like that, that pairing was pretty much unstoppable. And you saw that trust and that connection being built progressively throughout Rashi's rookie yep. season. Um, you know, you look at the fact that like, yes, Travis Kelsey, is he still a very good tight end? Like Travis Kelsey, despite his age, I mean, it is still the best tight end in football, but like yep. he's 34 years old. He's turning 35 this year. Like I would uh, not be surprised if Travis Kelsey retired after this nope. year, especially if they got their three Pete. I think Rashi Rice could post high end wide receiver two numbers this year, and you can get in at wide receiver four prices really quickly before we move on a couple recent trades. All these trades have happened within the last week on dynasty league football. Rashi Rice for Brian Robinson straight up. Oh, God, Rashi. Rashi Rice for Curtis Samuel, straight up. Rashi. Rashi Rice uh, for, here's an interesting one. It's Rashi Rice and Damian Pierce for Christian Kirk and Darnell Mooney. Rashi. So I'm saying, I think now is the time to go get Rashi Rice. I still think people have discounted him a little bit. Even in redraft leagues, Kate, like I'm looking at ESPN's draft rankings right here. Rashi Rice is being drafted in redraft leagues as wide receiver 35. I can promise you he's not going to finish as wide receiver 35. Like he is going to significantly outperform that ADP. Go trade for Rashi Rice right now. I also think that like part of this is the, the Xavier worthy factor. But again, like let's look forward, right? It, can Patrick Mahomes be a good enough passer to support two pass catchers? Yeah. yeah. I, I like Okay, yes. yeah, no problem. Um, I'm sure he will continue to to utilize the, the tight end position. We'll see how Jared Wiley works out. But, like, this is a quarterback that can support multiple receiving weapons. Yes. And 
they're both very good options and they both play a very different role in the offense. Like there's room for both. Let's not discount Rashi because of Xavier Worthy's presence long term. Yes. Nope. Rashi. All right. Let, yeah. hundred percent agree. There's another second year receiver that I'm aggressively targeting in my dynasty leagues. Let's talk about Jackson Smith Najigba next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. There's absolutely nothing better than at the end of a long day, sitting on your couch, turning on a game, and just zoning out for a little bit. But unfortunately, with the playoffs winding down, we just have fewer and fewer games to watch, and the sports aren't sporting the way we'd like them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. Go check out the NFL preseason lines. Go check out some of the futures lines that are available as well. And of course, we've got baseball games for the next several months. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Every day is on tomorrow's show, we're going to talk to you guys about three players that we are interested to see in the NFL preseason uh, week two. Can't wait to watch some more action, so make sure you tune in for that. But, Kate, let's talk about a receiver that we are targeting in trades right now before the year starts. Let's talk about Jackson Smith and Jigba. Let's talk about Jackson Smith and Jigba, the forgotten child, if you will. because. Yes. Nobody is thinking about Jackson Smith and Jigba right now, and I am. I just want to say I am thinking of you, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Didn't have like a crazy rookie season, but I do think like generally underrated 63 receptions, 628 receiving yards, four touchdowns, which, hey, for a rookie wide receiver who is effectively playing the wide receiver three role on his respective team, I don't think that's all that bad. Um, and that's just in terms of the box score. I think, uh, generally speaking, it wasn't healthy as a rookie dealt with a hand injury to start the year, then ended up with a, a hamstring injury. Now heading into year two, Tyler Lockett is another year older, which by the way, Tyler Lockett, I mean, continues to, to decline. He's had a decline in yards per reception each of the last two years, uh, decline in yards after the catch per reception each of the last two years, just, uh, you know, Yards per route run, again, decrease each of the last two years. Like, we are seeing the decline of Tyler Lockett. He's going to be turning 32 here in September. And now you've got an entirely new offensive system under Ryan Grubb coming over from Washington who just helped take this team to the national championship game. Like, yep. with a very good and efficient passing attack. Like, all – all signs are pointing up for Jackson Smith and Jigba, who, by the way, when he, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave were all on the field together, he was that team's wide receiver one. Yep. Uh, actually, I believe it was your coworker, Nate Tice, who was out at Seattle practice a couple days ago and said he was shocked at how advanced this offense looks in Seattle and all the different things they're, do they're doing in the passing game. This isn't going to just be an offense that, you know, runs, 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 and then passes only when they have to. Like, I think they're going to try to open things up for Gino a little bit. And let's let's remember, Jackson Smith and Jigba was a very, very good prospect. He is somebody with with Garrett Wilson, with Chris Olave, with Marvin Harrison Jr. He posted like an 1,800-yard season with all those guys at Ohio State. Like, he was the alpha among all of those receivers, right? And, and then he had a hamstring injury his final year. And then he gets drafted to this weird Seahawks team last year. He was still the first receiver. Yeah, he was still the first receiver drafted in 2023. And yet it seems like his value is way down. Being drafted as wide receiver 28, it's not terrible. But you see other receivers from that class like Jordan Addison, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, all being drafted significantly ahead of that. I think this is a Good time to buy Jackson Smith and Jigba. It's, it's not the discount that I was hoping, but I'm still willing to pay that price because I think it's going to go up. Here's my wide receiver one in that draft class. And Marcus, 
he is still so young. He just turned 22 in February, just turned 22. Like we knew based on what we saw from him in his, his second season at Ohio state, um, 91 PFF receiving grade that ranked fourth out of 384 qualifying wide receivers. Um, ranked fourth in terms of separation percentage among that same cohort. So yep. fourth out of 384 receivers um, average 3.73 yards per route run a very sticky stat ranked fifth, fifth in that cohort um, 92nd percentile in yards after the catch per reception. Like we are talking about a truly elite season. Yes. His final year at Ohio state uh, derailed because of injuries, but like, by all accounts, he seems very healthy this off season. It feels like he finally kind of got right. Um, and I do think like the ceiling for Jackson Smith and Jigba is a top 10 wide receiver. Like it, uh, he's, I think going to take over that wide receiver two role in the offense this year. But if Ryan Grubbs offense is as good as I think it can be, I think there's room for two wide receivers to flourish in this system. And Jackson Smith and Jigba is probably the wide receiver that like we know who DK Metcalf is. And yep. for fantasy, it's generally been a wide receiver to with, you know, upside. But L let me ask you this, Kate. Um, right now in Dynasty League football, there's been several trades for Jackson Smith and Jigba. The most common trade has been a 2025 first round pick going for JSN. Would you do that if you're looking to acquire JSN? Yes. Okay. And I, I think and I'm with it you. Depends on how early, like if I'm projected for like, if, if my team's really bad and I'm projected for the number one overall pick. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No. Not doing that. But like, if I'm a middle of the pack team right now and I can get that done, I'm. Yeah. I'm or if you're a contending team and you just, you know, you have your three receivers, but you want another one that you can rotate in. I think that makes a lot of sense as well. Cause you're not going to get, you're not going to get a receiver at the end of round one that has the pedigree of JSN and in a role that I think is going to be very, very good for him because I almost see no scenario in which Tyler Lockett is on this team in 2025. I could even see some scenarios, Kate, where Tyler Lockett's not on this team by October of 2024, right? Like he's JSN is just so good. And DK Metcalf has the role on the outside that they feel like they can move on from Tyler Lockett and maybe place Jake Bobo a little bit more on the outside. Go trade for JSN now before the price goes up. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first listen. Now go listen to the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. You can find the link to the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast in the description of this show. So you don't even need to go search for it. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go download the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Check us out on YouTube as well. You can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Maju. You can also read her at Yahoo Fantasy. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.